Hello everyone. So for today we're going to be talking about relative motion kinematics. Um, so relative motion analysis in general uh, is the analysis of the motion of one body via observations from some other body or some other point that's also in motion. Uh, so if we're moving, we observe something moving relative to us, how do we relate all of those uh, positions and velocities, etc. Uh, so we wish to come up with some sort of equation that does this relationship. So how do we relate the absolute positions, you know, my position, the other particle's position, uh, and how do we relate that to the relative uh, position, relative velocity, relative acceleration that I'm observing uh, from my moving platform. Uh, so let's start with one dimension. Uh, starting with positions, uh, imagine we're sitting stationary on the side of the road at some point O, so I'm, I'm sitting over here, uh, and from the stationary point I see a police car, uh, A, uh, and some small white sedan, B, uh, and I can measure a distance to each one of those. So I'm going to call uh, the distance of the police car X, A with respect to O, and the position of the uh, white sedan as X, B with respect to O, and each one of those is just going to be a single dimension. All right, so. A third distance we might observe, uh, so if we were the police officer in the police car, uh, we might observe the distance uh, from the police car's position to the uh, white car's uh, position. And this would be uh, XB with respect to A. Uh, so from a distance perspective, it's easy to see that the distance uh, to the white sedan is equal to the dis distance from the observer to the police car and then from the police car to the white sedan. So add those two uh, elements together and we'd wind up with the third element. So that's an equation form that is the relationship uh, for position in one dimension here. Uh, all right, so let's take a second to discuss the notation we're using with these because we've got some uh, more complicated subscripts. Uh, so I've pulled out one piece, uh, XB with respect to O, uh, and uh, this first piece uh, I'm going to have x or x and y uh, or velocity or acceleration so that the main part of this is just position, velocity, acceleration. You'll let you know what that is. Uh, in the subscript, we've got the first part, which is the point that we're observing, uh, and then we've got the second part, which is the point we are observing from. So x, uh, b with respect to o is the position of particle b with respect to ground. Uh, and if I had something like xb with respect to a, it'd be x, uh, the position of particle b, uh, as observed from particle a, which is the police car we had before. Um, so generally when we're observing something from the ground point, this is a point that's not moving, uh, that's called absolute position, velocity, absolute velocity, absolute acceleration. Uh, and um, Either of those XA with respect to O or XB with respect to O, those are both absolute motions there. Uh, when we are observing something from a point other than O, something that is moving over time, uh, that is known as a relative position or a relative velocity. Uh, so XB with respect to A uh, was the relative velocity in one of those previous equations. All right, so notation aside, let's go back. So moving beyond position, we can use more or less the same equations to relate velocities uh, and accelerations of the two cars. So uh, velocity of B with respect to O is velocity of A with respect to O plus velocity of B with respect to A. Uh, you can think about this if you know, you're know you in the police car cruising along at say 30 kilometers an hour uh, and the white car passes you and it looks like it's from your position, it looks like they're going 15 kilometers an hour. That's what a, something like a radar gun would measure. Uh, I can deduce that, you know, simply add those two things together, my velocity plus the relative velocity, and I would get the actual velocity of the uh, white sedan as it passes me. Uh, so if it's too high, they might pull you over. Uh, same thing applies for acceleration. Uh, if I have my, my acceleration plus my relative acceleration for some other body, uh, that'll give me the absolute acceleration of the uh, body I'm observing. All right, so checking the equations. Uh, we don't have to label our points A and B. Uh, if you want to, you can always just use A and B like we did there. Uh, and also we can have more than two relative velocities in our equation. So we could have uh, a couple intermediate steps between us or the particle we're observing and the ground frame. So for example, we could have this. So the velocity of some particle C with respect to ground 
would be the velocity of particle A with respect to O, plus the velocity of B with respect to A, plus the velocity of C with respect to B. Uh, so I can tell that this is a valid equation by looking at the subscripts. Uh, and we check the validity of subscripts by, um, imagine multiplying these things together. So if I did A divided by O times B divided by A times C divided by B, well the uh, a on the top and the A on the bottom here would cancel out. The B on the top and the B on the bottom over here would cancel out. Uh, and I'd left, be left with a C on the top and an O on the bottom over here. Uh, and that's the same thing I have on the left side of my equation. Uh, so if the subscripts cancel themselves down to the same value on either side, uh, you've got a valid relative motion analysis equation there. Uh, no matter how many steps you have in the whole process and no matter what you name uh, all of your points, A, B, you know, plane one, plane two, etc. Uh, so that's a way to check those equations. All right, moving over to 2D. Uh, so the same equations more or less are going to hold uh, if we simply treat the position, velocity, and acceleration equations that we've been using as vectors. So r is now my position vector and the position vector of b with respect to ground uh, would be the position vector of a with respect to ground plus the position vector of b with respect to a. Uh, and I can see if I add uh, this vector and this second vector I'd wind up with the uh, position vector of the uh, plane, the plane b in this case. Uh, so same same would apply to velocity, same would apply to acceleration. Uh, we simply have vector equations for each one of these. Um, so uh, if these are vectors, then vectors I can break down into components. So in rectangular coordinates, we'd break this down into x and y pieces. Uh, so if we expand it out in x and y, uh, this is what I'd have. So I'd have uh, some x position and some y position, and I use the i and j unit vectors to indicate directions. Uh, and this is the A with respect to O, this is A or B with respect to A. So I've simply expanded those out into X and Y components in each piece. Um, and uh, similar rules follow for velocities and accelerations. I'm using X dot and Y dot here to indicate X and Y velocities. Uh, and X double dot and X Y double dot to indicate X and Y uh, accelerations. All right, so those are our expanded versions of the vector equations. Um, and we break this out into X and Y components, and we basically have now two equations for um, each position, velocity, and acceleration. So I can relate the X positions, and I can separately relate the Y positions. Uh, for velocities, I can relate the X velocities, and I can separately relate the Y velocities, and same for accelerations. Uh, so this is the kind of broken down version of this, is what I would actually use uh, when solving relative motion analysis problems uh, in two dimensions. I'd use the component forms of each of those uh, equations. All right, so we talked about rectangular coordinates, but what about the other two? So normal tangential coordinates and polar coordinates, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about those. Um, and in rectangular coordinate systems, x and y are universal. So the x direction is the x direction no matter what point we're looking at. Um, so we can, since it's the same direction, we can add all those x components together, add all those y components together without a problem. Uh, when we were talking about normal tangential or polar coordinate systems, uh, the n and t directions for, say, particle 1 wouldn't be the same as the n and t directions for particle 2. Uh, because the tangential direction is the direction you're traveling. And if they're not traveling the same direction, we have separate uh, directions, separate coordinate systems for each one of these. So we can't add to R components, for example, uh, when we have more than one R direction. Uh, so this makes it more difficult to work with these systems. It's not impossible, and in fact, we're going to do this when we do rigid body kinematics. Uh, but we're not going to deal with it uh, for now in particle kinematics. And we'll come back to that. So that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.